So today we're going to be dealing with accounting for promissory notes. But first, let's start with the basic definition of a promissory note. A promissory note is a written promise made by a maker promising to pay the payee an amount at a fixed determinable future time. It may or may not include interest. Now, looking into the definition, we see that there are constant elements to a transaction involving a promissory note. First is there would always be a maker or the debtor and a creditor or the payee. There would always be an amount owed or the face value or the principal and the fixed determinable future time or the maturity date. Again, a promissory note may or may not include interest. Other important terminologies related to promissory notes would be interest, interest rate, interest period or the term of note, the maturity date, and the maturity value. The definitions of the terms are as follows. Interest is basically either a revenue or an expense depending on the point of view you are about to take. If you are the maker, then that would mean the interest is a form of expense on your part. However, if you are the payee or the creditor, the interest would serve as a form of revenue. The interest rate is the percentage multiplied to the principal to get the interest. The interest period or the term of the note would range from the date of the note issue once until the maturity date. So for example, you issued a note on July 1 and it is due to be payable on July 31. That would mean that the term of the note would amount to 30 days. The maturity date is the date on which final payment is due, while the maturity value is equal to the sum of the principal and the total interest of the promissory note. So we have here an example to identify the important terminologies. Um, on June 1, Carla issued a 10% 30-day 10,000 peso note receivable to Michael. Given this, we see that there are various crucial elements to be identified. First is the date of issuance, which is June 1, the maker, who is Carla, the payee, who is Michael, the face value, which is 10,000 pesos, the term, which is 30 days, and the interest rate, which is 10%. Okay. So where exactly do promissory notes come from? First is from the rendering of services or sale of goods. A customer may not have enough cash in hand and may first opt to issue a note receivable instead and pay at a later date. To journalize this transaction, we first debit, note receivable, and credit, sales or service income. A second source would be the settlement of an existing account. So for example, a sale was made on account originally as given by the journal entry, debit accounts receivable and credit, sales or service income. Typically, a customer would settle the balance by paying cash. If this is the case, he would make a debit to cash and a credit to accounts receivable. However, the customer may still not have enough cash on hand, so instead he would first issue a note receivable. So instead, your debit would not be to cash but instead to note receivable. So third is from a loan transaction where one receives a note receivable in return for cash given to a debtor. This transaction is journalized by debiting note receivable and crediting cash. So as mentioned before, promissory notes can either be interest-bearing or non-interest-bearing. The difference lies with the amount of proceeds received on the date of issuance and second, the amount to be paid on maturity date. For interest-bearing notes, proceeds received on the transaction date would equal to the face value of the note, while the maturity value would equal to the principal plus interest. For non-interest-bearing notes, proceeds received on the date of for non-interest-bearing notes, proceeds received on the date of transaction would be net of interest, meaning the interest would have been deducted prior. Oh, wait. For non-interest-bearing notes, proceeds received on the date of issuance would be net of interest, meaning the amount would be less than the face value since the interest has already been deducted beforehand. Thus, on maturity date, the amount due would simply equal the face value. So here we have an example of a promissory note with a face value of 10,000 pesos, an interest rate of 12%, and a period of 30 days. For interest-bearing notes, 
the proceeds received on the date of issuance would equal to the face value of 10,000 pesos. On the other hand, the maturity value due on the maturity date would equal to principal plus interest. Interest would be calculated by multiplying the principal by the rate and by the time. So given the formula, we have maturity value is equal to 10,000 pesos face value plus 12% times 30 days over 360 days in a year multiplied by the principal of 10,000 pesos. With that, we have a total maturity value of 10,100 pesos for interest-bearing notes. On the other hand, for non-interest-bearing notes, on the date of issuance, this 100 peso interest would already be deducted to get the total proceeds, meaning on the date of issuance, the maker would only be getting 9,900 pesos instead of the 10,000 pesos he would have gotten if he issued an interest-bearing note. So now we have here transactions involving interest-bearing notes. First would be the receipt and the second would be the, co the collection. So first, for example, you received a 10,000 10, peso note with a 10% interest on July 1 for sales worth 10,000 pesos. This note receivable would be due on July 31. So to record this transaction, you, seem, you simply need to make a debit to note receivable and the credit to sales. Both amounts would be equal to 10,000 pesos, which is the face value of the note, and the total amount of sales you have made. Second would be the collection of the note receivable dated July 1 on July 31. So that means you would be receiving cash, which you would debit, and then you would credit the note receivable at face value of 10,000 pesos. However, you need to remember that with interest-bearing notes, you would also have to credit an interest income. Okay, so the interest income would be computed by multiplying the face value of 10,000 pesos by the rate of 10% and the term, which is 30 days over 360, and you would get 83.33 pesos. The amount you would be debiting to cash would now amount to the total of the principal value and the interest income, which is 10,083.83. The important thing to remember is that note receivable would always be debited or credited at face value regardless of the transaction involved.